There's a hurricane blowing in the direction of Alexander Volkanovsky, and his name is Yair Rodriguez, who may be the most impressive offensive striker in MMA right now. And although Yair is an absolute nightmare to fight, I still think that Volk is going to smash him into the canvas and beat him to a pulp in the later rounds. Okay, so I mentioned that Yair Rodriguez is the most impressive offensive striker in MMA. Well, why? Why is Yair so damn impressive? Well, there's five attributes that he has that when you combine all of them together, you're basically looking at an absolute freak. There's something that just can't be recreated. And the only guy that has it is Yair. And I'm talking about number one, his cardio and volume. Yair can match anyone's work rate. He can go tit for tat with any other striker in his division for five rounds. I mean, look at the Max Holloway fight. From the moment that fight started all the way to the last second, he was forcing Max Holloway to work his ass off just to win any singular moment on the feet because Yair was throwing so much volume. And not only was he throwing volume, and this brings me to the second attribute, he was throwing it with speed and explosive ability. Yair has that Taekwondo background, and that's a very fast twitch sport. And he's got that fast twitch muscle memory from years of repetition because he's just used to throwing all of these unorthodox techniques. And a lot of those techniques in Taekwondo are pretty difficult to throw. So when you're just throwing a jab or a leg kick, it's smooth sailing. So the fact that he's throwing with speed and volume over the course of five rounds and he's able to maintain that is incredible. Number three, a variety of attacks. Yair Rodriguez has a deeper arsenal than anyone else that I can think of. And that's what brings me to number four. Because he has so many different kinds of tools and weapons, he's dangerous at any range, at any distance, because he has everything. There's nothing that this guy cannot throw. And to top it all off, number five, he's mastered the basics. What I see being Yair's best weapons are the roundhouse kicks to the body, the basic low kicks, you know, a jab and a right hand after throwing a head kick. He'll often use his high kicks to propel him into boxing range, and you see how he just snaps his punches right after his kicks, and they're just so crisp. When you take a guy like Yair and you give him this speed, you give him this cardio and volume and all of these different tools, and you make him master the basics, you're looking at a monster. In other words, you couldn't design anyone more horrific for a striker than Yair Rodriguez. The thing is, though, Alexander Volkanovsky is not going to strike with Yair Rodriguez, all right? He is going to shoot takedowns. He is going to grapple. He is going to make this a physical fight because I'm just going to say it now. If Volkanovsky doesn't shoot on Yair, he's a fool that's asking to get beaten up badly. All right. I understand that he's amazing on the feet. He's going to have his own success, but he has to grapple to win this fight. So why do I think that Volkanovsky is the guy to be able to close this distance? Well, number one, he's better at closing distance than anyone that I've seen in the featherweight division. And he's certainly better at closing distance than anyone Yair Rodriguez has ever fought. Now, of course, he's going to have to be careful, but he has the perfect combination to do it. And I'm talking about that bread and butter Volkanovsky combo. You know exactly the one that I'm talking about. The right hand into the left hook. The left hook is so straight, though, it almost looks like a jab. So you could basically look at it as a right hand into a jab. And all of a sudden, he's in the clinch. He's got an overhook or a body lock. And what you'll also notice when you watch Volkanovsky's fights, in basically every single round that he has, he'll end up in a clinch where he won't even go for a takedown. Like, he'll just keep you there and kind of just smother you and bully you to make you miserable, to throw you off of your game. As I said, to make it a very physical fight. That's what Volkanovsky does so well. We know that he's built like a mini little tank. He's explosive. He's strong. He has five round cardio. Well, when you're in the clinch with this guy, it's just exhausting and he's just trying to outwork you. And that's why sometimes he's not even trying to clinch you to land a strike or to take you down. He's just doing it to make you tired. And this is going to throw Yair off of his rhythm. So I mentioned that bread and butter combination that you guys will certainly see in this fight. That's the right hand into the short left hook or, or that straight left, whatever you want to call it. The reason why he's so good at landing it is because Volk has mastered reaction time. Like he's got such quick instincts to close the distance and he knows when to do it that his opponents just can't anticipate it. And I think that Yair Rodriguez is going to find Volkanovsky quite often on him in the clinch. And Yair has an answer for this. I guarantee you Yair has been drilling some kind of counter to that very technique throughout the whole training camp. But 
It's just that it's hard to know when it's coming. And on top of that, Volkanovski, before setting that up, will be trapping your hands. Like, for example, with the Brian Ortega fight, if you saw that, Volkanovski was constantly parrying and trapping Brian Ortega's hands. Now, to be fair, Ortega has a more heavy boxing stance, so it's easier to know where his hands are at. But Volkanovski can always set those entries up with feints and level changes, switching stances. And that's another thing that I noticed about Alexander Volkanovski that makes him different than anyone Yair has fought in the past. It's his movement. He's good at pushing and pulling his opponents exactly where he wants them to be with his footwork, with those feints, those city kickboxing feints. You know what I'm talking about? And I just don't think that Yair Rodriguez is going to be able to like pin Volkanovsky down at all times. And that's one of the reasons why Volkanovsky was able to beat Max and was able to nullify Max because Holloway just couldn't pin him down because of all the movement. And this leads me to the grappling. Why do I ultimately think that Volkanovski is going to smash Yair Rodriguez? It's because when he gets a hold of him, after this really long training camp that he's had with Islam Makhachev, where he's been doing nothing but drilling wrestling, he's been working with the B team, he's been working with Craig Jones, you know, he's had the Ortega fight experience where he's gotten out of all these bad positions and he's been able to do a lot of damage to one of the most dangerous men on the ground in Brian Ortega. I think that when he commits to takedowns, he'll be able to get Yair down there. And unlike a Josh Emmett, he's not just going to play around in Yair's guard, which is where Yair Rodriguez is most dangerous. And Volk is going to meet a lot of adversity there as well. Even when he initially takes him down, even if he's not in the guard, Yair Rodriguez is going to be ferocious off of his back. And he's going to be kicking and he's going to be trying to land elbows and scrambling and creating all of these crazy exchanges to look for a submission because that's what Yair will do. He'll value the submission over a position, but ultimately it'll work against his favor because all of those risks lead to great consequences. When Yair doesn't get what he wants on the ground, he'll end up in a bad position to where his opponent will just grind him out and beat him up. Like, look at the Max Holloway fight. Max Holloway was able to take down Yair Rodriguez, and as soon as he would pass his guard, he would just have his way with him. And I think that Volkanovski is not the kind of guy that's just going to sit in your guard. Volk is the kind of guy that's going to try to smash past your guard. He's going to try to sit in half guard. He's going to try to stack the guard and try to tee off on you like he was teeing off on Brian Ortega. He does a really good job at imposing his will and not being drawn into that, like, jujitsu scramble. And I also take a lot of confidence in the fact that even if, you know, Volk does get in a submission hold, he'll be able to work his way out of it. He'll be able to stay calm. We saw Yair Rodriguez hurt Brian Ortega and end up finishing him because Ortega got caught in an arm bar and he wasn't very patient with the way that he tried to escape and he tried to yank his arm out. All of a sudden, he had his shoulder dislocate. So I think that Volkanovsky is the perfect guy to remain calm, cool and collected if he gets caught in one of these submissions. And I understand a lot of people praise Yair Rodriguez for how ferocious he is on the ground as well with his grappling and his guard. And I just want to say that I've noticed while watching his fights back that because he's not as comfortable on his back as he would be on the feet and it's not second nature, he cannot keep that same kind of explosive quick twitch effort up on the ground like he would be able to do on the feet for the long haul. It all comes crashing down after a few minutes. Now, what I mean is, for example, I'm going to bring up the Frankie Edgar fight. And before you say to me, Lucas, that was so many years ago, this is just an example that, that has been a theme in Yair Rodriguez's ground game for a long time. Frankie Edgar faced some serious adversity in the guard of Yair. Yair was like a tornado, a rabid dog, even back then. He was throwing, you know, back fists and elbows and looking for submissions and up kicks. And he was given Frankie everything that he could handle for about a minute. And then that second minute came and it started to slow down a bit. And by the third and fourth minute, Frankie Edgar was basically just beating him to a pulp. Because again, you cannot keep that same pace up on your back for so long, especially when that's not your go-to. And guys, when they're usually not fighting where they're most comfortable, tend to fade a little bit quicker. And you look at his grappling exchanges with Max Holloway. Uh, Holloway, for example, had Yair Rodriguez on the ground at multiple occasions, and when he would get up to his feet, he would still be dangerous, he would still be fast twitch, and he would still throw with a lot of volume, but I also noticed that after these grappling exchanges, his strikes on the feet tend to be a little bit more predictable. You know, when you make it a very physical fight with Yair, and you really mix it up, and you grapple, and you beat him up a little bit on the ground— 
everything becomes a little bit more telegraphed on the feet. And that kind of takes away one of the things that makes him so dangerous, which are those flashy techniques. When they're easier to read, they become more predictable. And when they become more predictable, a guy like Alexander Volkanovsky that has a unreal gas tank and has the ability to be fast twitched throughout five rounds as well. If he makes a read on you making a mistake on one of those flashy techniques, he could hurt you badly, right? Or he could then use that to take you down again. And ultimately, I think Yair Rodriguez, if he gets taken down by Volk, who's not going to be sitting in his guard trying to tangle around with him like it's a jiu-jitsu match, I think he's going to slow down. And I could just see Volkanovsky running away with the fight in the later rounds. And all of that being said, what really brings it home, what makes me feel like, all right, I think this is the safe pick ultimately, is you look at Volkanovsky's trajectory throughout his career and how people have wrote him off going into the Holloway fights and going into the Islam Makashev fight. He always shows that he's just extremely prepared. And Coach Eugene Behrman said it best. He's never seen a champion from a Western place that didn't get caught up in the limelight, that didn't get caught up in the clout, and that just, in fact, got even more disciplined and more dedicated as their success got greater. And Volkanovsky has just continued to outwork every single other guy that he's fought. Like Max Holloway was just not prepared for Volk in the third fight, and Volkanovsky exceeded everyone's expectations, especially in the Islam Makashev fight. I thought that Volk was going to get squashed, and he proved me wrong. With all of these specifics training that he does with the B team and Craig Jones, it really does work, and it just shows how obsessed this guy is at getting better. And I was listening to an interview of Alexander Volkanovsky that he did with DC and RC, and he was mentioning that, you know, Yair's probably training the hardest he's ever trained right now. He's probably stepping it up. Well, I guarantee you that's my bare minimum. What Yair Rodriguez and all of these guys that are doing to fight me when they step it up a notch, that's just an average day at the office. No, I'm, I'm trying to outdo that every single time I step in the gym. And I also heard this quote on commentary when I was rewatching the Holloway and Volkanovsky 2 fight. And they said that at the fighter meetings going into that rematch, Volkanovsky mentioned that he gets more nervous for his training sessions than he does his fights because of how much of a beating and a, a meat grinder those sessions are and how difficult it is to actually get through it all. And so the fights to him are just, it's just effortless. And that's why we see Volkanovsky just running away with these fights and making it look easy because he's so goddamn prepared. And you pair that with the fact that he's also got all of this money at this point in his career. Well, what does that mean? It means that he can invest more money into his training camp. Uh, a perfect example of this would be GSP and Dan Hardy. Dan Hardy talked about how he spent like $10,000 on his training camp with GSP and that he was just not able to compete with the level of preparation that George St. Pierre had, who was spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on their training camps. Now you look at Volkanovsky bringing in an 11-time Taekwondo champion, this Van Roon guy, bringing in Craig Jones. So I know they're close friends, but still, he's probably paying Craig Jones and getting all of these guys, flying them in. Is Yair Rodriguez investing all of this money into his training camps like Volkanovsky? He's probably investing a lot, but I don't think it's possible to go as ham as Volk. And so if you take a guy that is this obsessed with getting better and you pair it with all the fights that they're winning in championship settings and the pay-per-view points that they're getting that's continuing to invest money into the training camps, into getting better, into nutrition and recovery, you're going to get the best fighter on earth, especially when they have the talent of Volk. And you look at the talent of Volkanovsky. He's just able to destroy people. Like He's schooling guys like Holloway. He's schooling guys like Aldo and giving Islam Makhachev the toughest fight of his life. Look at what Islam did to Charles. And then look at what Volkanovsky did to Islam. Like, th this guy is different. He is a freak of nature in his own right, like Yair Rodriguez, but it's that mindset that sets him apart more than anything else. Okay, so I've gone into depth on how I believe Volkanovsky has the edge, but I want to talk about how Yair can win this fight because he definitely has a chance, and I'll just get this out of the way. I think he needs to finish Volkanovsky. I don't know if he's going to outwork Volk over the course of five rounds, especially when they're in their grappling exchanges, where I think he needs to be more defensively sound than ever before. But you think about what makes Volkanovsky so good is his movement on the feet, that footwork, you know, his explosive entries to get into the clinch, to close distance. How do you take that away from him? Well, of course, you have to chip away at his legs. And like, who has ever really gone at Volkanovsky's legs? 
Aldo didn't. And I know Jose Aldo has some really solid leg kicks, but he didn't really go for them. Max Holloway didn't really try to kick Volkanovski's legs all that much. And even when he did, there was not a lot of sting on them, like Yair Rodriguez, who has vicious leg kicks. On top of that, if you start going to the legs and you start going to the body and you attack the base of Volkanovski, it's going to open up the head. And Yair Rodriguez is so good at sneaking in head kicks. As you guys have maybe noticed, when he throws a head kick, he'll look down right before he throws it. It's that like classic trick that Anderson Silva used to knock Vitor Belfort out with the front kick. He'll just look down and then he'll chuck a head kick. And they come out of nowhere. So I believe that if he takes away Volkanovski's base, he'll slow down Volk's footwork. He'll maybe make it so Volkanovski just is standing in one stance rather than constantly switching from southpaw to orthodox. And those takedown entries of Volkanovski will be less explosive. And you'll basically handicap a big part of his game. And of course, I think those orthodox techniques of Yair Rodriguez are where he does his best work with the roundhouse kicks to the body. And he uses all the flashy techniques to kind of blur your vision and then sneak in those really solid basics. And I think if he's going to hurt Volkanovsky, he's probably going to do it with like a body kick like he did to Josh Emmett where he stumbled Josh Emmett back and he used his kick to propel him into throwing punches. That's something that Yair does so well better than anyone else. He'll land a kick and immediately after that, follow it up with a combination. I think that's his way to hurt Alexander Volkanovsky. And I think he's going to have to TKO him. And if you get hurt by Yair Rodriguez because of his speed and his boxing, I mean, think about the boxing. It's gotten so much better over the years. Like Yair Rodriguez will fire off a five punch combination and everything in that combo will be thrown with extreme speed. And I feel like if he puts him down, he's going to finish him. Or he could land like a grazing head kick off of that bald dome of Volkanovski and Volkan come toppling down and then Yair can follow it up with a body kick when Volkanovski's trying to defend his head. So there's so many different ways that he can set up these attacks. When it comes to the grappling, I don't think Yair Rodriguez should take as many risks because I think he should really value his gas tank on the feet. And I think the less effort that Yair Rodriguez has on the ground the better. Now, of course, you want to stay safe. And I'm not saying Yair should just sit there like Conor McGregor, you know, gassing Habib out by getting hit in the face. That's not what I'm saying. I just think in general, he should be a little bit less risky with the way that he tries to go for submissions and he should prioritize just getting up to his feet. And I think that that's the way he would win the fight just by slowing it down and being very composed. Uh, once again, not necessarily being that same tornado on the ground. I actually think that's kind of what it boils down to. If Yair Rodriguez is out here putting up the fight of his life every single time he's on the ground, I think that's going to slow him down to where when he gets on his feet, everything's going to be a little bit more labored. Other thing that I want to mention, because we're talking about Yair, and I may as well say this right now, Volkanovski just bulked up to 155, and this weight cut, I think, is probably going to be a little bit more difficult than his former weight cuts at 145. Now, to be fair, you can make the argument that because he used to play rugby at 214 pounds, his weight cuts at the beginning of his career were probably even harder, and maybe he's mastered his nutrition. But I'm just saying, he was talking about how he was working his ass off to just get up and wait. And I feel like, what if he's draining himself this time? What if this is going to be a really difficult weight cut and his chin is going to suffer? And uh, if that's something that works against him, then we'll also see a Volkanovsky that just might not be as fast. You know what I mean? That's something that worries me. If I'm picking Volk, is will he have the same speed that he did when he was fighting Holloway, when he was fighting TKZ? And to top it all off, Yair is 30 years old, Volkanovsky's 34, and he'll be turning 35 later this year. And I understand he started his career a little bit later, and he doesn't have as many miles on him as a lot of other guys, but still, there has not been a single champion in the lighter weight classes below 155 past the age of 35. And at some point, it's going to come to an end. Now, if there's anyone that can maybe defy those odds, it's probably a guy like Volk, but how are we going to bet against Father Time? Now, he's not there yet, but will he look the best he's ever looked? Will he look that much better? I don't know. I don't know if his speed is going to be different. I don't know if he's going to be more improved than ever. He might just be a tiny bit worse. We don't know. But even if he was a tiny bit worse, he could still win this fight. It's just something to think about, that age and the fact that he's going to be cutting weight. Will he have the same speed? And again, I just talked about how Yair can win, and I think his best attacks are the orthodox ones. But his power isn't that crazy. I understand he hasn't knocked out Max and he hasn't knocked out Brian Ortega because they have granite chins. But look at what he did to Josh Emmett. He didn't just drop Josh Emmett on his ass 
and he was hitting Josh Emmett with flush question mark kicks and a, a front kick to the face and really solid combinations with the hands. I think he kind of just broke the body of Josh Emmett, and we know Josh Emmett has had all of those injuries throughout his career, and he's a guy that definitely can wilt when he starts getting injured in fights. And I think that Volkanovski, if anyone is able to tough out those body kicks and those leg kicks and maintain that movement and maintain the feints and the stance switches, it's Volkanovski. I just think he's in so much better shape than an old Josh Emmett. And the power of Yair, sure, he lands things that just sound like a baseball bat. And, and he's got such crazy technique, which is what allows him to land so hard. But I still don't see him just knocking people out with one shot. Like, when's the last time he's actually knocked anyone out? You know what I mean? So I think his power isn't as crazy as it looks. Like, for example, Armand Saryukian has wicked body kicks. But I just don't understand how people were just able to eat them. And sometimes, even though Yair has beautiful technique, you look at him, he's not necessarily that powerful of a guy. So I think that even if Volkanovski does get front kick to the face, I think he'll be able to take it. Now, of course, let me just say this. When I'm saying front kick, I'm talking about Volkanovski moving back and getting grazed with a front kick. Or I'm talking about Volkanovski catching a head kick on his guard. Or catching a good knee, flying knee that partially lands on his chin. If Yair lands anything flush with beautiful technique and Volk doesn't see it coming, of course he's going to get KO'd. But my overall point is, I don't see like this ability that Yair has to just graze you and all of a sudden, oh, he grazed you with a spinning back kick and you just can't take it and you're down. That's not how it goes in his fights. Like, I understand he's really amazing and he's got all these flashy techniques, but it's not like people are just falling left and right when he lands them. You know, when you look at his build... He is a long, lanky guy. So there is a given, there's a take for his ability to keep that up over a long period of time. And that is, he doesn't have that much power. So he's going to have to run Volkanovski onto like a really good combination. Or as I said, really go at the base of Volkanovski to start to slow him down, to open up those flush head kicks, to open up the flush body kicks. That's what he's going to need to land. He's going to land something flush, which is harder and easier said than done. And my ultimate prediction for this fight is Volkanovski 49-45. I think Volk's going to lose the first round because of how difficult Yair Rodriguez will be to control on the ground to even take down. And that's when Yair is at his fastest. I think that if Volk gets past that first round, which I don't think he'll win because I, I simply think that Yair is going to outdamage him and just land the bigger strikes, Yair will start to slow down when Volkanovski makes it more physical. And I think Volkanovski is going to win the second edge it out. And I think the third, fourth, and fifth are going to be dominant rounds. And we're going to see a 10-8 from Volkanovski in like the third or the fourth, where he's just pummeling Yair Rodriguez into the canvas in a similar fashion to when we saw him do that to Brian Ortega. It's going to be difficult for Volk to get going, but once he does, and once he starts to impose his will, he's going to start to run away with it. And he's going to start to dominate Yair Rodriguez. And as I said, just beat him to a pulp on the ground in half guard or by stacking the guard. And Yair Rodriguez is going to be all bubbled up by the end of it. But let me know what you guys think. Who are you picking and why? Let me know in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time.